I mean, I got too much credit. That was not the Shogun that a lot of people were used to. Now, he never made excuses. He let me have my moment. But I can tell you from watching this guy, that was not the Shogun that I expect to show up tomorrow night. Now, if the right Shogun shows up, he still, he still is in very hot water. James Tahuna has a very similar skill set, and Shogun's going to have to deal with it. All right. Well, we are uh, also going to talk about the other exciting light heavyweight scrap there. That's right. Ryan Bader, he finds himself in a position that he's not been in in a long time since he came off the Ultimate Fighter, and that's out of that coveted top 10 echelon position, going against a, a very game jiu-jitsu fighter, uh, Anthony Parash. And let me tell you something. Bader has had some very tough opponents in his last, in his last few fights, Shogun, and then he had... Um, uh, Bober. Bo right. Yes. To, sh to share. To share. He has to share. So now he finds himself in a very tough position going against a very, uh, very game Parash. Now Parash is somebody you cannot sleep on because he is somebody that can upset your night. And he's also a local boy, so he's going to have the crowd behind him. All right. Well, it's now time to get back to our main event, though. Uh, heavyweights are going to be on display, and homegrown hero Mark Hunt will undoubtedly have that Australian crowd on his side against fourth-ranked Bigfoot Silva Chael. Hunt has had a career resurgence of late. How do you think he's been able to do that? Uh, listen, has he ever? I just interviewed our president, Dana White, on Fox Sports Live last night. Dana White said Mark Hunt is one of the greatest stories in all of sports. He went on to tell the fact that when the UFC bought Pride, they inherited Mark Hunt's contract. Dana White called Mark Hunt up and said, give me your address. I'm going to send you a check and you're not going to fight. You're not good enough. And Mark Hunt said, absolutely not. I want to earn my money. Put me in the octagon. And here he is in a main event. All right. Well, Bigfoot does have more to lose in this fight. He's currently ranked in the top five coming off a heavyweight title shot back in May. Rashad, you've trained with Silva a little bit. Can you sum up his style? I sure can. He's a guy who comes at you with a lot of pressure. And when he gets on you, it's hard to get him off you. Such a big guy, he lays it on you from the ground to pound, from side control. I had this guy on top of me in practice, and I'm telling you, I cannot move an inch. So let me tell you something. If he gets on top of Hunt, look for it to be a short night for Hunt. Oh. My goodness, that is a big man for sure. Well, both Hunt and Bigfoot are members of American Top Team, and they've even trained together in the past. But this is a fight game, and as the guys to my left can attest, sometimes friends have to fight friends. For more on this main event matchup, let's toss it out to our friend Heidi Andral, standing by in Brisbane, Australia. Heidi? Well, thank you very much, Karen. The UFC has made it to the land down under here in Brisbane, Australia. And one man who is happy about that is Mark Hunt. Now, you remember it was visa issues that actually kept Hunt on the ground in New Zealand as he prepared for one of the biggest fights of his career back in May against Junior Dos Santos. Now, for that bout, he, in fact, did not land in Las Vegas until just days before the fight. Here he has the opportunity to fight in his own backyard. Now, since joining the UFC, Hunt has gone a perfect 3-0 and when fighting outside of the United States, but it won't be easy to keep that perfect record against Antonio Bigfoot Silva. He is in fact a perfect 9-0 when fighting outside North America. So it will be interesting to see which of these two international fighters and former training partners exits the octagon with a W come Saturday. Guys? All right, thank you very much, Heidi. When we come back, it is scale tipping time in Brisbane. Catch Mark Hunt, Bigfoot Silva, Shogun Hua, Ryan Bader, Pat Barry, and the rest of our Fight Night competitors making it official. John Anik is on the mic down under when the UFC weigh-in brought to you by Rise, Son of Rome, returns. Yes, yes, yes. And six, five, four.
What is up, Brisbane? Great to be back here in Australia. We got the line coming. They are coming, I promise you. How about a hand? Come on, folks, take your time. Kahili is here. How about a hand for Kahili, ladies and gentlemen? Our matchmaker is Sean Shelby. Managing director is Tom Wright. The veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. The one and only Burt Watson. And the legend, Mark Ratner, pulling up the rear. Let's get going with an early prelim in the welterweight division. Ben Manimal Wall versus the Dominican Nightmare, Alex Garcia. Tonight, Fox Sports Live will bring you all the highlights and analysis of a full day of action in sports, including the NFL, college football, college basketball, the NBA, and NHL. Fox Sports Live is tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Garcia and his opponent also making his UFC debut, Ben Manimal Wall. enters the UFC with a 13-0 perfect record. The 24-year-old middleweight hails from Poland, where he was a two-time amateur MMA champion. He claims he has an amateur record of 65-5. UFC returns to Fox December 14th, and the action begins with the prelims on Fox Sports 1 with six fights, including a showdown between Joe Lozon and Mac Danzig. Live coverage begins.
Saturday, it's the Big Ten Championship on Fox with huge BCS implications as second-ranked Ohio State looks to reach the national championship game, while 10th-ranked Michigan State looks for their first Rose Bowl berth in 26 years. Our coverage of the Big Ten Championship begins Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox. 25, 125 for Justin Scoggins. And his opponent, Richie Vess. Australia's own Richie Batslick brings a five-fight win streak in his official Octagon debut. The Sydney-born fighter was also a competitor on the Ultimate Fighter Smashes. In fact, he actually found his love for MMA when competing in another Australian sport, surfing. Ring is a Canadian kickboxer who really needs to string a couple of good wins together. Nick Ring, you know, it'd make more sense if he was called Nick Octagon. I know you don't have a lot of control over your surname, but it's kind of like a guy selling oranges calling himself Joe Banana. Just a thought. Nam Fan makes his bantamweight debut. He's looking for a little bit of consistency after going 2-1-2 two two out of his last four fights. He said he's been so hungry making bantamweight at 135 that he's been dreaming about food. Guess what, my man? Tonight you get to make your dreams come true and eat all the food you want. back in 2009 when he lost a close decision to Miguel Torres for the WEC Bantamweight title. He has won three straight and his UFC record is five and two.
The UFC returns to Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2 tomorrow, beginning with the pre-fight show, followed by prelims and then UFC Fight Night, featuring bouts between Mark Hunt and Bigfoot Silva and Shogun versus Tahuna. Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2 are your homes for UFC action. Julie Katz, my old teammate at Jackson's Gym, has the most fights out of the women in the Bantamweight division with 28. Dylan Andrews right here. Quick backstory on this. He was part of season 17's Ultimate Fighter. He happened to be on John Jones's team and was Coach Jones's last pick. He's tomorrow night going to take on his fellow teammate and sparring partner who happened to be Coach Jones's first pick.
When Pat Berry made his UFC debut back in 2008, he told Joe Silva, the matchmaker, do not put me on a card in Australia. Well, five years later, here he is all the way in Brisbane, despite the fact that he's not really fond of flying. This marks his first MMA bout outside North America. 237 for Pat Berry. Karen Bryan, Chael Sonnen, and Rashad Evans here in Los Angeles as we reset for our top three fights on tomorrow's card. Right now in Australia, in a light heavyweight battle, it's Ryan Bader versus Anthony Parash. And the Aussie Anthony Parash is first to the scale. Now, Chael, our own Dominic Cruz affectionately calls Parash Mr. Bean. But Mr. Bean showed some pretty good skills against your training partner, Vinny Magalhaes, back in August. You know, I think that Parash has always been very good, but he didn't really get his due. He had a run in the UFC, and it was kind of short-lived. He got back into the UFC, taking a short-notice fight in his home country that nobody else wanted. He won. So the UFC, or rather, he lost, and the UFC kept him. He weighed in there at 205 pounds. UFC appearance, Ryan Bader. All right, Rochelle, what can you tell us about Ryan Bader? I mean, obviously, we know he's a great wrestler. He is a great wrestler, but he also has a lot of power in his hands, you know, and that's something that he's been falling in love with a little bit. He doesn't use his wrestling as much as he really needs to because he got that one hit a quitter. And when he hits people, they're usually out. Take your pants off. Uh, just a little heavy. Just take off your pants. That way we get a real weight. 205. 205 for Ryan Bader. This guy's both look good. A little bit of a height difference here. You can tell we got a little height, a little more muscle for Bader. They both look ready. James Tahuna in his fight with Ryan Jimbo showed that he can take a punch, or a kick for that matter. Yeah, you know, this is a guy, you know, in my weight class, I always got to keep my eyes on people. And he's a guy I got my eye on because he's somebody that I think can be a problem. Very explosive with the striking, but he also has pretty good wrestling defense. He can take the fight pretty much where he wants to. And that's something that we watch out for in this fight coming up. So James Tahuna is my future prospect. Light heavyweight champion, Mauricio Shogun Hua. It's no secret Shogun's one of my favorite fighters, Chael. This guy always brings it, but what do you think he's going to do tomorrow night? He's one of everyone's favorite fighters, but he's got to reset. He's talking about changing weight classes. A lot of times guys will do that for a fresh coat of paint. Karen, I think Shogun has always belonged in middleweight. I think he stayed out because of his relationship with Anderson Silva. Let's let him get through tomorrow night, though, and let's see which Shogun shows up. Shogun seems to be a little bit more fit than normal. I see more than two abs. Normally you don't got none, but he he's got, been training with Damian, with Damian Maya and that crew over there. So yeah, maybe he's uh, got a little better conditioning nowadays. But I mean, look at Tahuna, man. He's built, man. It's gonna be if, if looks alone can get it, I would say Tahuna definitely by a long shot. But it's definitely gonna be a good one. Look at the two fighters in the main event brought to you by Rise Son of Rome only on Xbox One. Available now. That is an aggressive, powerful man. Bigfoot's landing some shots. He rocks it. Big up the Bigfoot has very big 
punching power. That knockout was one of the best standing punch combination knockouts we've ever seen inside the octagon. Bigfoot's the number four on the planet. Now if I can get it over Bigfoot, then I'm back up to the top level, and so everything's on the line here. Mark Hunt showed in his knockout victory over Stefan Struve that he is one of the most formidable contenders in the UFC's heavyweight division. And if you stand up with that guy, you are likely going to be at a disadvantage. He is so famous for that, the play old knockout and walk away. He's done it so many times throughout his career. Take me out or I'll take you out. That's the way it works for me. Man, that guy hits hard. I'm better than him. I believe in myself. I believe in my hands. It's a matter of just who's going to get who first. We go, we trade, Bigfoot falls over, and I win. There's a big right hand. There's another one. That's a scary, scary man. First fighter to the scale, Antonio Bigfoot Silva. All right, Joe, obviously Antonio's a big man. He's 6'4". Do you think he uses his size the right way? I absolutely do. He looks like a monster. Now, I want our fans to pay attention, not just to this way in right here, where he's going to come real close to the limit, Karen, but also to his opponent. His opponent is going to look smaller, but I assure you, uh, Mr. Hunt will also come in close to the same size. I mean, you know, this guy is absolutely... Look at his feet. Look at his feet. His feet alone are so huge and massive, but he's a big guy. Oh, there's one on his back. See, that, that, that's his own foot. He's got feet everywhere. <laughs> 64, 264 for Bigfoot Silva. And his opponent, Mark Super Samoan. Mark Hunt getting a nice round of applause from the locals there, too. Yeah, and about time. How many times has Hunt had to travel the fight? How many times has he laid in bed at night and dreamt about walking into this very atmosphere and fighting at home? Now, that may sound great. Perhaps it adds pressure. We don't know. But right now, for today, he's going to enjoy this moment. John Anik, and we are back here in our Los Angeles studio. Now, guys, we know that the heavyweights in our main event are friends. We know that Bigfoot is the favorite. We know that Mark Hunt is going to have the crowd on his side. But what do you think the X factor is going into this fight, Joe? The X factor for me, there's a rule in boxing that if a guy gets knocked out, he will be very scared next time and is likely to get knocked out again. Bigfoot, or rather Mark Hunt, is coming off a devastating knockout. I don't personally question his chin, but I'm worried that he may. And if he does, it will make his offense differ, and it will really uh, hurt him defensively. Yeah, I, that, that, that does stand a big uh, chance. But at the same time, when you're a guy like Mark Hunt and you've been knocked out before, you kind of got to, you kind of can wash it off like, ah, it happened before, it was a fight. This fight, I'll do better. All right, well, as we noticed there in the stare down, uh, uh, Rashad, uh, Mark Hunt has 262 pounds, Bigfoot 264. They're very close in weight, but the home crowd advantage is going to be playing in for Mark. It definitely will play in for Mark, and, you know, it may work for his favor. It may work against him. When you're at home, there's a bit of more pressure than it is, and he's not a ranked fighter in the heavyweight division, but at the same time, it's still the hometown pressure. But it may actually fuel him as well, too, because he's like, you know what? I'm at home. My family's here. No matter what, I'm going to have a great time. So it may help him, but it may hurt him. All right, no, he is going to have a great time. I spoke to him the other night, and he was fired up. He did his hair. That's when he gets in battle mode with his hair. hair. All right, well, after the break, we're going to take a closer look at the man they call the Super Samoan. Shale and Rashad analyze Mark Hunt and give you his keys to victory. It's a hunt breakdown and an interview when we return on the UFC Weigh-In Show, brought to you by Xbox Rise, Son of Rome, available now. <laughs> 